Hi, in this video is going to continue on with supporting a connective tissue. And cartilage tissue and bone tissue are closely related and do have some shared features, but cartilage is a tissue that will form structures, but bones are actually organs because they're going to contain several different tissues. Bone tissue being the obvious one, but the articular cartilage, the blood vessels, the nerves are also part of that bone. So we're going to take a little look here about the gross anatomy and we're just going to use this long bone for example. A long bone has a shaft with two distinct ends that are called epiphysis. And you'll have a proximal and distal epiphysis which will be covered by that articular cartilage. The shaft is called a diaphysis. And then there's a hollow L cavity called the medullary cavity which is going to be filled with bone marrow but also contains a lot of blood vessels and nerves going through it. The external part of the bone is what is referred to as compact bone. Internally, and in the epiphysis, and on the side of the medullary cavity, is spongy bone. And we'll see that this is made of the same type of bone material, but is structured differently. The bone is also covered by a fibrous connective tissue layer called the periosteum. The periosteum, like the perichondrium, is made up of two layers, a fibrous layer of dense, irregular connective tissue, and a cellular layer, which would be important in maintaining bone growth and remodeling. That dense irregular connective tissue will be an important part of how tendons and ligaments insert into the bone tissue. It also provides a route for nerves and blood vessels before they penetrate into the bone tissue itself. So that's some of the gross anatomy, and next we're going to look into the histology of the bone tissue, also known as osseous tissue. So like all connective tissues, it is specialized cells within a matrix. And in this case, it is bone cells within a solid mineralized matrix. And as always with connective tissue, the matrix is key to the properties of bone tissue. The matrix is created by certain bone cells, so it has some organic compound, mostly collagen fibers and the ground substance, which is going to provide the framework for the mineral crystals, which make up the inorganic component. Inorganic components make up about two-thirds of the matrix made up of these mineral deposits such as calcium and phosphate. This is the material left over in skeletons which can last millions of years. Functionally, this inorganic component increases the compressional strength, that is the ability to withstand pressure, and also give it, gives it its rigidity, that is its stiffness. But living bones are not brittle because that stiffness is tempered somewhat by the addition of collagen which is part of the organic component. And this also gives bone resistance against being pulled. That is, it gives it a tensile strength. So that's the matrix. And unlike fibrous connective tissue or cartilage, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the different bone cell types because they're very important in bones being actually very dynamic tissues. The first is osteocytes, which, like chondrocytes, reside within the little cavity within the matrix called the lacuna. Unlike chondrocytes, osteocytes are highly active cells which require a lot of oxygen and nutrients. But oxygen and nutrients cannot diffuse through the mineralized matrix, and so there are these passageways through the matrix which the osteocytes extend some protoplasmic arms to reach a blood supply. Those passageways or canals are called canaliculi. So there is the space, the lacuna, which is associated with these canaliculi. The cell body sits in the lacuna and has extensions going through these canaliculi to reach a blood supply, as well as communicate and share materials with other osteocytes. So there are the osteocytes sitting within the bone tissue. They're going to maintain the matrix and they also have an important role in detecting mechanical stress, which we'll talk about some in the following lectures. Before maturing to an osteocyte, the cell is an osteoblast. And these are the cells within the periosteum or within the endosteum, which is the lining covering the spongy bone structures, which we'll get to in a moment. You could think of these as bone makers, which make new matrix, that is the ground substance, which provide a framework for the mineralized components and the collagen fibers. And before these were osteoblasts, the cells were osteoprogenitor cells, also residing within the periosteum and endosteum. Their job is to make new osteoblasts as needed. And the last type of bone cell is an osteoclast, 
which is function is to break down bone tissue to reabsorb the calcium from the bones to go back in the body. This is a normal process that is breaking down of bone and as we will see later, the balance between an osteoclast breaking down bones and osteoblast building up bones is key to both bone remodeling in response to stress and some of the problems we see with aging. So those are the bone cells within the bone matrix. And next we're gonna look at the organization of the bone tissue. We saw the outside of the bone is covered by that hard compact bone and the inside by the spongy bone. So these are the two types of bone tissue structurally that is in terms of how they're organized. But keep in mind they have the exact same matrix and the same bone cells. Both spongy and compact bone are found in every single bone that we're going to look at later on is going to have a solid compact bone covering the outside and a spongy porous inside. So we'll first go over the compact bone to look at the structural organization. The high density compact bone on the outside is going to provide compressional strength as well as protection against blunt trauma. Although the compact bone looks solid, we're going to see several different structures under microscopic examination. First, bone is extensively vascularized, which reflects its dynamic nature. Blood vessels run longitudinally through spaces called the central canals and then perpendicularly through perforating canals. And then there is the unique arrangement of the bone tissue itself. And one of the main features of this compact bone, considered the functional unit, is the osteon. The osteons are long cylindrical structures oriented parallel to the long axis of the bone and the main compressional stressors. Structurally, an osteon is a group of concentric tubes resembling the ring of a tree trunk in a cross section. Each of these tubes is called a lamella. Lamella are a layer of bone matrix like a ring and the osteocytes sit in their lacuna within that ring with the caniculi running perpendicular to them. Within each lamella, the collagen fibers and mineral crystals align and run in a single direction. That's the arrangement of the osteon made up of concentric lamella, but also around the entire bone is called a circumferential lamella. And in between all the concentric lamellas are smaller pieces called interstitial lamella you may see in some slices. And later when we get to spongy bone, we're going to talk about the trabecula, which are also composed of a similar type structure. So back to the osteon with its concentric lamella. In the center is the central canal in which blood vessels running longitudinally bring in oxygen and nutrients to this living tissue in the compact bone. So within a single lamella, the collagen fibers and mineral crystals align and run in a single direction. However, the fibers and crystals of the adjacent lamella always run perpendicular to each other. This alternating pattern is optimal for withstanding torsion or twisting stressors. So functionally, the osteons are kind of like miniature weight-bearing pillars whose arrangements also resist twisting forces. So this is high-density compact bone arrangement, which provides compressional strength and also protects against blunt trauma. But internally, the bone is protected and takes on a different form, which is going to provide a lot of strength, but is also very lightweight. This is the spongy bone, and the arrangement is less complex than that of the compact bone. The unit of organization here is called trabecula, and it looks kind of like a jungle gym. In long bones, this is mostly in the epiphysis, where the spongy bone is filled with red bone marrow, which is the tissue responsible for making new blood cells. This highly porous tissue gives multi-directional compressional strength, but it's also very lightweight. Each trabecula, the strut, contains several layers of lamella and osteocytes, but it's too small to contain the osteons or vessels of its own. Then there's a layer of cells surrounding the trabecula called the endosteum, which only contain bone cells and no fibrous tissue, in contrast to the periosteum. The endosteum also covers the inside of the central canal. So the endosteum is all internal and contains only a cellular layer as opposed to the periosteum, which is external and also contains a fibrous layer. So back to spongy bone, the osteocytes within trabecula are gonna receive their nutrients from capillaries in the endosteum surrounding the trabecula via connections through the canaliculi. So the osteocytes 
whether in compact bone or spongy bone, are located in lacuna. Chondrocytes of cartilage are also in lacuna, but materials can diffuse through that watery matrix to the extent that those relatively inactive chondrocytes need it. Osteocytes, on the other hand, are sitting in bone matrix, which does not permit materials to diffuse through. To get oxygen and nutrients that they need, they have that as extensions of their cell membrane traveling through caniculi. The caniculi connect the cells together, but also to a blood supply. That would be either the central canal or the spaces within the spongy bone. So a connection to the blood supply is going to make one of the major differences between bone and cartilage, as we'll see later, the ability of bone to remodel itself and repair itself. So now you know the cells, the matrix, and know about the arrangement of compact bone and spongy bone. Next, you're going to be learning to identify bone features like the head, neck, and greater trochanter of the femur here.